Hello, my name is Rod Diaz. I'm your customer service technician here at Malabar International in Simi Valley, California. You can visit our website at malabarinternational.com for your ground support equipment needs. Let's get started with our newest addition to our cooling service cart line. The 1016 unit was designed exclusively for the Airbus A350 aircraft. You can purchase the 1016 unit in four different configurations. Dash one is a high voltage with a genset. Dash two is the low voltage with a genset. Dash three is the high voltage with no genset. And dash four is the low voltage with no genset. In this video, we will cover the five main aspects of the 1016 cart. One, safety. Two, operation. Three, preventative maintenance. Four, calibration and five, troubleshooting. So let's dive in right into safety. If correct operation and maintenance are not followed, the 1016 cooling service cart, like any other machinery, may cause injury to the personnel, damage the aircraft, or the service cart itself. Shock hazards. The cooling service cart has potentially fatal voltage applied during operation. We do not supply the cart with a power connector because of the many different connection options out there. You, the customer, are responsible for choosing the proper connector for your facility's power supply. Use qualified personnel to install this connection. Remember to turn off all power before beginning any service procedure and never operate the cart if the ground connection from the power core or the generator set has been disconnected or compromised in any way. Hazardous material. The service cart and aircraft are filled with PGW 6040 cooling mixture. PGW mixture is non-toxic fluid. Even still, there are some potential health effects to consider. If in contact with eyes, it may cause slight eye irritation. Repeated contact may cause flaking and softening of the skin. Mist inhalation may cause upper respiratory irritations. And in rare cases, repeated exposure to propylene glycol may cause central nervous system effects. Refer to the PGW MSDS for complete details of fluid handling, storage, and toxicity. Compressed gas warnings. The 1016 cart uses compressed nitrogen gas to purge the aircraft system. Use caution when connecting nitrogen lines to the cart. Sudden release of compressed nitrogen can accelerate particles that may enter eyes or penetrate skin. Always use nitrogen in well-ventilated areas. Pressure hazards. Before loosening any tubes, hoses, or fittings, ensure that internal pressure is at zero. Do this by turning off the main power disconnect selector switch and or the perch valve located by the hose rack. Rotating equipment. Like we said before, always turn off the power before performing maintenance procedures. This prevents sudden or unexpected starts while accessing the main and top-up pump motor shaft couplings or in the vicinity of the generator cooling fan. Do not wear loose garments while in operation. Static grounding. Use the bonding cable to prevent buildup of static electricity or static discharge. Connect the static cable to the aircraft grounding point. Safety devices. The 1016 cart has several safety devices for the purpose of safeguarding personnel and equipment. You must never operate the cart with any safety device removed or disabled. Relief valves. The cart has relief valves throughout the system prevent from overpressurizing the aircraft cooling system. These relief valves can be adjusted externally. However, caution is advised. Relief valves are factory set and ready to use. Fan guard. The generator fan has a guard. Do not operate without the guard in place. Battery case. The generator has a 12 volt automotive battery for starting the engine. The battery is contained inside a closed battery case with a removable cover. Keep the battery case cover in place at all times to protect against falling objects. Electrical enclosure. The main power disconnect switch handle is interlocked with the electrical enclosure door to prevent access unless the power is off. The switch handle has a provision for a padlock in the off position to be used for lockout tagout procedures. Control panel. The control panel should remain closed at all times to avoid electric shock or component damage. 
except for service by a qualified technician. Pressure transducers. There are nine pressure transducers that monitor various system circuits. The manifold block includes calibration ports and isolation valves. Emergency stop button. The red button on the control panel will shut down the entire car except the generator. Electrical hazards. High voltage, arc flash, and shock dangers may be present. Use protective gear when working on or near energized equipment. Do not operate the cooling service car under aircraft fuel tanks or engines. Keep the car five feet away from the aircraft and make sure that the power of the generator set are off before performing any service, read and understand all warning labels before operating the cooling service car, and refer to the manual for a full description of hazards and procedures. Now let's go over some of the components and procedures for operating the car. Control panel. The control panel has an HMI touchscreen monitor, the power on and off button, an hour meter, an emergency stop button, and fluid side glasses for fluid monitoring. Clean reservoir tank. This is a 45 gallon tank with a level transmitter, low level switch, fluid side glass, vented cap with a strainer, and a drain valve. Sub reservoir tank. The sub reservoir is a 10 gallon tank of usable fluid. The tank comes with an insulated blanket, a level transmitter, high and low level switches, fluid side glass, a vacuum relief valve, a pressure relief valve, and a drain valve. The waste reservoir. This is a 45 gallon tank for fluid purge from the aircraft. It also comes equipped with a high level switch, a side glass, and a drain valve. Main motor pump. The 1016 is equipped with a three horsepower, 20 GPM pump. It's used for all operation modes except for accumulator top off. Top up motor pump. This is one third horsepower pump with a output of 0.6 GPM. It is used only to top up the accumulator. Supply and return filters. The supply and return filters are both installed with a 12 micron filter element. The solenoid valves. These valves are stainless steel and come equipped with a 24 volt DC solenoid. They serve as fluid direction control. Turbine flow meter. The flow meter is located in the supply line and it comes with a dual turbine rotor that provides flow rate information to the HMI monitor. The vacuum pump system, it removes air from the fluid and is preset at four inches of mercury. The fluid heater, the 1016 car has a circulating heater to condition fluid temperature before aircraft service. Pressure transducer manifold block, it is provided for calibration purposes. Hoses. The car has two 50-foot hoses, a supply hose, and a return hose for fluid transfer. Interconnection cable assembly. The cable is for interfacing between the 1016 car and the aircraft at service. Static ground reel. A static ground reel is located at the front of the car. You must connect to the aircraft grounding system during servicing operation. Generator set. A diesel generator set comes with select models. The generator set has an eight gallon tank equipped with a fuel gauge and a shot off valve located at the bottom of the tank. Audible alarms. The 1016 has an audible alarm located at the top of the control panel. Storage box. A storage box that includes a pocket pH meter and a drain tube. The nitrogen port. This port is for connecting nitrogen source to the cart. Nitrogen is used in the draining of the aircraft coolant and draining the service car hoses. Electrical enclosure. An electrical enclosure houses the main power distribution. Here you can find your main disconnect switch and a green indicator light signaling the car is on and in warm-up mode. Warm-up is only required if the temperature is negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. While in warm-up mode, you will not be able to operate the cooling service cart. Start up an operation. In this section, we will talk about how to set up and use your 1016 cooling cart for the Airbus A350. The 1016 cooling cart was designed to fill 
drain, and top off the Airbus A350 aircraft's supplemental cooling system loops. The car has internal preconditioned fluid modes to ensure proper fluid delivery to the aircraft. First and foremost, car positioning is very important. The 1016 cooling service cart must be located five feet away from the aircraft. The cart comes with a 100-foot power cord to connect to facility's power supply or use the generator set. Before servicing the aircraft, the cooling service cart must be operated in a runaround mode to remove all air from the hoses. To do this, the hoses must be completely uncoiled from the hose rack and connected together. Turn on the cart. Turn the power disconnect selector switch to electric if using facility provided power, or choose diesel to use the generator power. If diesel is selected, the generator must be turned on first. To start the generator, first open up the fuel valve at the bottom of the fuel tank. Second, on the generator controller, press auto and then press start. The engine should start. Allow approximately two minutes for the engine to reach operating temperatures before powering on the cart. Once power is turned on, proceed to the control panel where you will find a green power button below the hour meter. Press it and the HMI will begin to boot up. After HMI is active, it will prompt you to select user profile. There are three types, one, operator, two, engineering, and three, engineering administrator. Level twos and three require a password for access. Choose operator profile. This will take you to the main navigation screen where you can select the mode or alarm history. The first mode is for conditioning the fluid prior to aircraft connection. If the supplemental cooling system is 90 to 100% empty, then select the bleed hoses for 90 to 100% empty SCS. If the SCS is full, then you will choose bleed hoses for full SCS. Once the fluid and cooling service cart has been conditioned, connect the bonding ground cable to the aircraft. It is important to do this before connecting the hoses for service. With the bonding ground cable connected to the aircraft, disconnect the hoses from runaround mode and connect them to the aircraft. Now you're ready for filling of the whole SCS. Follow the on-screen instructions for proper operation. You will begin by touching the start button at the top left corner of the screen. If internal pressure is above 36.3 PSI, the LV7 valve will open for five minutes to slowly depressurize the system. Once the system is depressurized, the filling of the SCS will begin. There is a 30 second stabilization period after filling is complete. Once the supplemental cooling system is stabilized, the bleed light will illuminate and you can begin the aircraft bleeding process by touching the start button next to the bleed system. Once the bleed is complete, the green button for the top of the accumulator will illuminate. For the next step, refer to the temperature compensated pressure level table in the aircraft maintenance manual. The TCPL chart will give you a pressure parameters for the accumulator on the aircraft. Pressure cannot be below 59.5 PSI or above 94.3 PSI. The maximum and minimum differences cannot exceed 4 PSI or a TCPL out of range banner will appear. Drainage of the whole SCS. Connect the supply and return hoses to the ground support panel on the aircraft. If the aircraft has an internal pressure above 36.3 PSI, the LV7 valve will open to depressurize the aircraft system. Once depressurized, the cart will use compressed nitrogen to evacuate PGW from the aircraft supplement cooling system. When 90% of the system has drained, a banner will appear asking you if you would like to proceed with the drainage. If you select yes, the drain will continue until the timer counts down to zero. If no is selected, the regulator will gradually decrease pressure to zero and shut off. Prepare to empty the service cart for top up of accumulator. In this mode, you must connect hoses in runaround mode Touch the start button to begin the bleeding 
of the hoses. Once no air in the system is visible, you may touch the confirm button to continue. Follow the same process to prepare the empty of the service cart for the top up of the consumer unit. Preventative maintenance. The daily maintenance starts with a visual inspection of the following. The vacuum trap, drain if more than half full, the frame structure, check for loose nuts and bolts, power core, look for signs of wear and damage, hoses, look for wear or damage. Also, check the parking brake by engaging the lock and verifying that the wheels are locked. Quarterly maintenance consists of the followings. Testing of the emergency stop button. To do this, put the cart in runaround mode and press the emergency stop button. Discontinue the cart if the emergency stop button does not function properly. Inspecting cart hardware. Check hinges, latches, handles, gas struts, and replace if necessary. Inspect the sub-reservoir insulation for tears or damage. Annual maintenance involves the following. Inspect the wiring, check for loose connections, and check all power terminal screws for tightness. Inspect and replace the electrical enclosure vent filters. Lubricate the steering mechanism, parking brake mechanism, and wheel bearings. Calibrate the pressure transducers. On behalf of Malabar, we hope you enjoy this presentation and found it valuable for your service needs. For further information, please consult the owner's manual or contact us at sales at malabar.com.